UK is negotiating with Armenia about moving illegal migrants there. The British authorities have entered into negotiations with a number of countries around the world about sending illegal migrants deported from the kingdom to their territory. This was reported by The Times. According to the British resource, a dialogue on the fate of illegal immigrants is currently being conducted with Armenia, Costa Rica, Côte d'Ivoire and Botswana. The UK believes that it will be possible to conclude appropriate agreements with these states. Previously, an agreement on the movement of illegal migrants was concluded with Rwanda. Previously, options were offered to send illegal immigrants to Brazil, Colombia, Peru, Paraguay and Ecuador. But the Foreign Office of the United Kingdom doubts that Latin American countries will agree to conclude such an agreement. Finally, it is proposed to send illegal immigrants to underdeveloped countries of the African continent like Togo or Sierra Leone but a number of African countries have already refused such a proposal. These include Tunisia, Morocco, Gambia and Namibia. It is most interested in Armenia's position on this issue. Currently, Armenia is practically a mono-ethnic republic with the exception of small communities of Yazidis and Molokans, as well as Russian relocants. But in his desire to please the West, the country's current Prime Minister, Nikol Pashinyan, is ready to turn the Armenian state into something unknown, accepting culturally alien illegal immigrants from the UK. Armenia has denied holding any substantive or technical talks with the United Kingdom on the possibility of accepting illegal migrants expelled from that country after a British newspaper reported on this. The Republic of Armenia and the United Kingdom have a broad agenda of political dialogue, but there were no substantive or technical negotiations on the specific issue raised in the publication, Armenia's foreign ministry said. French Navy prepares for war. The main focus is on Russia. France has shifted its naval posture from intercepting drug traffickers and poachers to training for a conventional war, Rear Admiral Jacques Mallard has told Politico. Mallard commands France's only carrier battle group built around the nuclear-powered Charles de Gaulle. He spoke about the changes in an interview with the EU edition of Politico. We're moving from a world where we were pretty free to do as we pleased to one where we feel threatened on a more regular basis, Mallard said. We now train for other missions, in particular what we call high-intensity warfare. Naval combat is becoming increasingly likely, he said, and the French sailors now practice fighting against someone who wants to destroy us, not someone who wants to do illegal trafficking, not someone who wants to steal fish. With the Russian Navy engaged in the Black Sea and the Houthis of Yemen interdicting vessels linked to Israel, the US and the UK in the Red Sea, Western navies need to deal with increasingly uninhibited competitors, Malad said. That's where we become a little more aggressive, or at least we prepare to be, added the Admiral. According to Mallard, the French and Italian navies will engage in a joint exercise later this spring based on the Polaris program that simulates a naval battle. Introduced in 2021, the combat simulation works to disinhibit tactical thinking, which Mallard described as a bit more risky but very useful. While the Admiral did not name the expected army, he made it clear it was not the People's Liberation Army Navy. As long as the Chinese haven't invaded the island of La Réunion or decided to kick us off the island of Mayotte, he said, naming two French territories in the Indian Ocean, there's no reason to single out the Chinese as our main adversary. Mallard's comments come after weeks of French President Emmanuel Macron floating the idea of potentially having NATO boots on the ground in Ukraine. The possibility was outright rejected by most, though not all, members of the US-led bloc. Residents of Russian Orenburg City are furious and threaten Kremlin with rallies. The outskirts of the Russian city of Orenburg are rapidly going under the water. Residents are furious and threaten rallies already in the capital of the region, writes the Mozem Obyaznit Telegram Channel. According to the governor of the region, Denis Pasler, the water level in the Ural River is approaching a record high of 11 meters. The head of the region urged residents of flooded areas to evacuate. Hundreds of houses in the vicinity of Orenburg and several city districts with a population of half a million have already gone underwater. The Mozem Obyaznit Telegram Channel contacted the victims. Everything is only getting worse. The house is sinking, says Yulia Selina, who lives in the village of Veseni, a 30-minute drive from Orenburg. 
Many are flooded and the leadership is inactive. Everyone is silent. The younger son was pulled out through the window. We were able to get out through the door. Julia continues. My son was very scared. We just made repairs, bought furniture and all that stuff. The situation is aggravated by the clove in the village where meltwater flows and which the authorities did not clean up before the flood, ignoring the requests of residents. Promised payments for recovery will not be enough. No one takes into account the damage to the house, not to mention furniture, repairs, equipment, things. We didn't take anything out. I'm not the only one. People will not be satisfied. So there will be a rally, she promises. Valeria, whose house was flooded in the village of Zarechny, works in the regional administration. On April the 10th, the water approached her house and the yard completely flooded in a few minutes. As a resident of the region, of course, I believe that the payments are too small and do not cover losses, but as a civil servant, I assume that these are only primary payments, she says. Here is what the residents of Orenburg write in local publics and on the page of Governor Pasler. The special water operation is going according to plan. Why are the payments to victims so ridiculous? People have lost everything because of the negligence of officials. People don't have houses, but you give 20,000? Do they have to live on it? Feed the children? Thank you to the Orenburg City Hall for spending the budget on lanterns instead of engineering protection of the city.